And now, in studio, bringing his Midwest values from the show me state to the land of San Diego. He's a triple threat, licensed as an attorney, mortgage broker, and a top producing realtor who's crushing the competition. Here to deliver you what's happening in the trenches of the market, your host, Michael Gaddis. Welcome back to the Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. I am your host, Michael Gaddis of michaelgaddis.com and frontierloangroup.com. And we're going to continue our discussion with Pat Hodgkin of firstamericantrust.com. So let me ask you, Pat, what are the duties of a trustee, of a successor trustee? What, what responsibilities do you have? So again, the, the legal responsibilities are outlined in the probate code. However, um, outside of that, you know, one of the first things that we do is we get the trust, we tear it apart, we see what pieces, what has to be done, now what has to be done in the future, and making sure that it all can be done. Uh, every once in a while we run, run across a trust that's not well written, and we ha may have to work on that. But um, the initial thing is you have to file the will, you have to notify all the beneficiaries. Then you have to wait 120 days, make sure that nobody comes out of the woodwork to say, wait a minute, I'm not a beneficiary, but mom told me I was supposed to get this, or whatever it is, the situation. People actually get a copy of the trust on the beneficiaries. And then, um, and then we make sure that the real estate is maintained. Now, whether it's rental real estate, or it's the residence, we make sure that's completely done. Now, of course, this is on the state administrations after the death. And then we have to go through, make sure that the properties are are insured until we sell them, make sure the property taxes are taken care of, make sure that last year's taxes are taken care of, and this year's taxes. So even if somebody died on January 1st, guess what? The taxes are going to be due. And then there might be fiduciary tax returns as well. And that's really important to do. I'll tell you, the IRS does not like a tax return missed. So we make sure we take care of all that. We marshal in all the assets so we know what we have when we're dividing up the assets to the beneficiaries. We make sure that those assets as we bring them in are invested properly and correctly. And we, we really try not to produce any um, tax situations as well as we're going along. So it's really, it's, it, it's complicated in that there's a lot of things that you're trying to get done in a short period of time. And then within a year, probably within six months, depending on how complicated it is, after we've sold the property, if that's what's needed to be done, or we've re-registered the, the titles of the property, um, and then we marshal, after marshaling the assets, we distribute those assets to the beneficiaries and um, make sure all the taxes are done, make sure all the bills are paid. We have to make sure that all the bills are paid and covered and there are no debts outstanding, there's no properties outstanding that we have to take care of. Now if the individual is incapacitated, then we have to make sure that, again, the properties are taken care of. Do they have real estate property? If they have real estate properties, we don't manage those properties, but we manage the managers. Very similar to what they did all their lives. We make sure that the rents come in properly, the leases are written properly, that the, uh, the units are rented in time and, and accurately and properly. We make sure that taxes are paid. We make sure that any upgrades to the properties are correct. In other words, um, you know, the, the property manager is not charging $10,000 for a toilet. So we make sure that the property manager is doing what he's supposed to be doing. And then the personal home. We make sure that the yard work is taken care of. We make sure that if there's anything broken in the house, that that takes, that's taken care of. Oftentimes people, when they go into an assisted living situation, they, they believe they're going to go back to their home. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but it's our responsibility to maintain that home for if and when they can get back to their house. Um, and again, then the taxes, we make sure the bills are paid, we make sure that all insurance, all property taxes are taken care of. Um, we make sure that the beneficiaries are taken care of. We make sure that the trustor, who is the individual who wrote the trust, um, it is taken care of. So if they want to live in the home and they want to have a caregiver, we know the good caregiving companies. We 
know the bad caregiving company. So we make sure that somebody good is in there taking care of them. We'll drop by, check in on them, call them if they can talk on the phone. We do take that extra special step, which a lot of um, corporate uh, uh, fiduciaries do not do. Take that extra step to actually see them. Really person, you're really personable. We sure. really are. We I always say that, you know, we're we're kind of that private fiduciary wrapped up in a corporate trustee. So um, we, I personally develop relationships with individuals, make sure they're okay. You know, we're not going to be there once a week, unfortunately, but we're certainly going to be there on a regular basis to make sure that they're being taken care of. We're paying the bills, so we have to make sure that those bills, that money is going to the right place and being spent well. Well, you're listening to The Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. I am your host, Michael Gaddis of michaelgaddis.com and frontierloangroup.com. And we're speaking to Pat Hodgkin of firstamericantrust.com. So what I'm hearing from you is basically, I'm going to summarize here. A trust is basically like the rule book. It's basically, a person establishes rules for how they want their stuff to be distributed, so to speak. And you are like the referee of that. You're basically making sure that, that the trust is applied to this person's estate the way this guy or this person basically set it forth. And that's, that's what you're doing. You are bound to this trust. Absolutely. I always say that the trust are the words of the trustor when they can't talk, whether they're passed away or incapacitated. So and, and keep that in mind when you're writing a trust, when you're writing your own trust. Keep that in mind that these are the words that you, how you want everything handled. Some people want total outright distributions. A lot of people, and it's becoming more and more common, they, they, want their, they don't think that their kids are going to be responsible enough to inherit a million, two million, three million dollars, fifty thousand dollars even. So they'll put it in trust to be held with us and we'll make sure that that money is held and distributed the way that the trustor wanted it to be. Let me ask you a question, Pat. You ever heard of Ben Crosby? Oh, yes. Do you know a story about his trust? You know, I, I, I do, but do you have it? Well, I know a little bit about it, and maybe you know more than me. Basically, he had three sons, and what he did is he established a trust that would enable them to get the assets of the trust. I believe it was when they were 65, was it 62 yeah, or 65? Yeah, it was when the, uh... Something crazy like that. And here's the sad part about this, and I've always kind of been, you know, I, I grew up with Ben Crosby. I loved him. I thought I loved all his movies. I mean, I grew up with my grandparents, so I'm like into really, really old movies and stuff. But I mean, I was always so bitter towards him because I was like, you know, how could you do that to your kids? You know, how could you have them wait until they're that old? Two of his kids passed away before they reached the age, and only one of them re reached the age to get the assets, and he died a year after that. So, I mean, you know, that seems to me to be a little bit, and I guess I did talk to an estate planning attorney once who told me, well, maybe he did it to ensure that they would have a retirement, that Absolutely. they didn't do anything wrong. And I get that. And I, I believe me, I'm not one of those people who think you should put, you know, $60 million in, in with a 22-year-old or something like that. But um, I, I just thought that was really kind of, you know, down the line there. And I was like, well, that's an extreme trust, you know, for that much asset. It is an extreme trust. However, you can write within that trust within the trust, within the trust, you can, you can write in there and state that um, they can get all the income every year from the amount and that they can get health, welfare, uh, health, maintenance, education, and support. So if they need something, if they want a house, the trustor can take the money out and pay them. We run into this situation all the time so that um, if somebody wants a house, we make sure that it's it's applicable. In other words, if it's a million dollar trust, they're not gonna spend $800,000 on a house when they just need a $250,000 condo. Um, so we don't want them to throw the money away. The other thing is, you know, I believe the Crosby kids had some drug issues, so. Could be. Who knows? when they? Of course, if you read their books, you know why they had those <laughs> drug issues. At least that's their story, right? <laughs> <laughs> But who knows if they could if they had received that money earlier they could have killed themselves. No, I, I agree. You you can yeah, you could think about it different ways, but Anyway, Pat, I want to thank you for taking time to come on my show today. Uh, we've been speaking to Pat Hodgkin of firstamericantrust.com. 
Pat, if there's any, is that the best way to get a hold of you by by uh, by going to FirstAmericanTrust.com? You can go to FirstAmerican.com, go under staff, you can find me in there, and uh, you can call me at 858-410-5761. Thank you, Michael. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Pat, for coming in. And after the break, we're going to talk, we're going to finish up with a little discussion about reverse mortgages. You're listening to The Michael Gatta Show on AM 1170, The Answer.